All right, ladies and gentlemen, VandySports.com back. Sean Williams here with Justin Angel on our YouTube channel. And, well, we're back. Uh, Vanderbilt, everybody, there was a few people on our board getting a little, getting a little twitchy. Like, hey, man, when's first commitment coming? Well, it came yesterday, and then two more came. So, uh, a big three commitment day for Vanderbilt on Monday. Kind of a nice way to start the week off. Um... So yeah, now Vanderbilt has three commitments, uh, all on the defensive side. Um, obviously, we expected Langston Patterson to commit. That was one we were expecting. And then after his commitment, like about a few minutes later, maybe five or six minutes later, uh, B.J. Dykite, he committed. And then uh, Lana Sunk committed later that evening. So we're going to talk about all those guys uh, right here. And we got Justin Angel on the horn here. He's going to kind of give his... Thoughts about today, and before we flip over and check out their profiles, check out their huddle, Justin, just talk about uh, your thoughts on Vanderbilt's three commitment day on Monday. Well, I just, you know, looking at it, uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of the James Franklin era, kind of how it got kicked off. I know if uh, if you follow recruiting at that time, uh, Franklin had a big day with Stephen Weatherly, Darion Herring, Ladarius Banks. Those three guys, you know, were like the that committed like the first day, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and they got a lot of momentum going in that type. So, you know, it kind of reminded me of that. And uh, you know, getting somebody like Langston Patterson, uh, in-state guy that had a lot of people that wanted him. Uh, you know, that's that's a really big get for Vanderbilt. And then, you know, as we talked about, that was the one we were expecting. And then you have the other two, which are taller, lengthier guys that, you know, may be kind of under the radar at the moment. But, you know, uh, once you get out to start camping and doing those other things, those are guys that could uh, definitely blow up later on. So it's always good to get in on those guys early. Right, and uh, we'll go a little bit more in depth on each of those guys. Oh, right now. <laughs> oh, and also, just throw out the disclaimer before we get started here. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Vandy Sports. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so whenever these videos drop, you will get notified. You can watch them at your convenience. And obviously, we're going to always, all the videos we always load on here, we end up sharing on VandySports.com as well. So, if you're not subscribed to VandySports.com, please do. Yearly membership costs you nine ninety five a month. Uh, you can get on that special nine ninety five a day plan. Only for the special people, though. So... Uh, All the football, basketball, baseball, and recruiting insider news for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Please check that out if you're not subscribed already. So, there's your disclaimer for the day. Justin, you ready to do this? I'm ready. All right. Let's flip the script here. All right. Let's start off with Linus Zunk. Now, Interesting story here. Uh, he's only got two offers, but he actually has four. Uh, Yale and uh, Dartmouth are his other offers on here. So uh, And Troy as well. So obviously not a lot of Power 5 offers. You know, Vanderbilt was the first Power 5 offer. They kind of, you know, come in there with an offer pretty much a week ago, a little over a week ago. So he definitely took advantage of that opportunity. Um, but interesting story with Zunk, a uh, basketball player in Germany, Berlin, Germany, growing up. And uh, he just started playing football two years ago and started playing football in Germany and uh, got hooked up with an organization over there and uh, kind of got him in touch with uh, Raven Gap, Raven Gap in the mountains of Georgia. And uh, sure enough, he comes over and he's been playing th- this past season. Uh, this is his first season of United States football uh, in the States. And he says he loves it. He's learning a lot, but he says it's a lot of fun. Um, and obviously he's doing good things. I mean, ba- for Vanderbilt to kind of, you know, uh, get his get their eyes on his film. I mean, they really like his size. Um, you know, they, obviously he's raw, but, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the things he kind of mentioned. He's like, hey, they like it. I kind of like it that I'm inexperienced just because, you know, in those situations where we've taught the kids like that and before, you know, they don't have a lot of bad habits. So uh, I think that's, that's a good thing for – obviously Vanderbilt sees that as a good thing going forward. So 
six foot six, two hundred and thirty pound defensive end. Uh, I'm gonna hit his film here, Justin, and you just tell me what you like about uh, Zonk here. Well, it's like you talked about. You know, he's he's got the physical tools to work with. You know, he's six foot six, he's two hundred and thirty pounds, but he's somebody that's going to be able to add weight. Uh, now, how much he's going to be able to put on? Is he going to be able to put thirty five pounds on, or or you know, up to forty pounds to be a six six two sixty five guy, or is he going to be more of a six six two hundred fifty pound guy? Not sure, but uh, you know, he's got that going for him and as you watch his film here you know somebody he hasn't played a ton of football like you talked about you know he's only played for two years but you know he's pretty versatile in the things that he does you know he's playing some stand-up defensive end but he's also coming out of a three-point stance uh he has some pretty good you know pass rush moves for the most part uh, the competition that he's playing here isn't great by by any stretch but you know you can see the athleticism and those things and you know just like you were talking about even though you are you know, somebody's inexperienced usually that's they they don't have any bad habits and then you can mold them into whatever you want them to be okay mm -hmm. but it, as you watch in there you know he's got those long arms um uh, he runs to the football well you can see that he's got speed and those type things but you know once he starts to learn the game and know how to use his hands, know how to use that body. Um, you you can definitely see what Vanderbilt likes here. Yeah, no doubt. Obviously, I, I saw a couple of highlight clips. It looks like some of their home games. They got a pond out there, so whenever you're done playing football, you can go fishing. So that's always a plus. Yeah, catch, catch a little catfish out there. <laughs> <you're good. laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else to add about uh, line of sunk there, Justin? Before we move on. Well, for every basketball player that's six foot five or six six and is playing post somewhere, uh, <laughs> you need to get on a football field and play that as soon as possible. And this guy right here is uh, another example of that on a very long list. Uh, of yeah, those. Uh, talk about some guys. Bring up some guys that have a history of that. Do a little what guys that's played basketball and then made the transition. Correct, sir. I mean, you got Antonio Gates that did that. He right. didn't even play college football. But, I mean, you have several guys that, you know, if you're a post player at six foot five, those guys don't play Division One basketball typically. Right. Uh, you better be able to the three extremely well. So, I was going to say, uh, but Tony, if you play Tony... football. No, go ahead. John, you go ahead. No, I was going to say Tony Gonzalez, too. I think he was kind of played yeah. both, but, uh, but yeah, there's another example. I was also going to throw in uh, George Fant as well, Western Kentucky's own George Fant. There we go. All, there we go. All Sun Belt power forward, and now he's getting paid a lot of money to be the offensive tackle at, for the New York Jets, and obviously was the Seattle Seahawks before that. Didn't play a lick of football until the last season. So... There you go. Just goes to show you what those big guys, big guys that, you know, have that athletic ability in basketball can, you know, with size like that in the frame can mold into on the football field. Absolutely. All right. Commit number two. This is the second commit of the day. Just happened right after Langston Patterson, uh, BJ Dykite, uh, a guy that we talked to, you talked to, Justin, uh, back uh, yes. in February last month whenever he got the offer. Kind of got the feeling that whenever he got that Vanderbilt offer, it would he would probably commit pretty soon. Um, obviously, plays uh, Pinson Valley. You know, uh, hey, we know who came out of there. It's that Cunningham. So you have you know, like a Vanderbilt legend that came out of there, and obviously he's pretty tight with that Cunningham. I think they have a mutual friend. Um, so um, you know, really looks up to Zach Cunningham what he did at Pinson Valley, and uh, obviously he's looking to be the next uh, great athlete at Vanderbilt from Pinson Valley, but uh, <laughs> kind of look <laughs> look at his profile. Obviously, he's rated now. He's a 5.5. Listed as a tight end, they kind of switched his position, and uh, obviously, here's the thing, too. He's a versatile athlete. You know, when you talked to him back in February, you know, he kind of mentioned that he didn't really specify a position with you. You know, he just said Vanderbilt right. likes his versatility. He plays defensive end. He plays outside linebacker. He plays tight end. He plays wide receiver. Um, I talked to him yesterday after he committed. He kind of you know, he said versatility, but he said, yeah, Vanderbilt kind of likes me, kind of 
kind of sees me as like an outside linebacker star type position. So a guy that can rush the edge, a guy that can drop back into coverage as well. You know, obviously six foot four, he's lengthy. Um, he's got long arms. Um, obviously, he got changed to a tight end. He was at the Under Armour uh, camp in Atlanta this past weekend. Our uh, our national analyst Sam Spiegelman was down there, so he actually worked out at tight end at that camp. So that's why the position changed happened on his profile. So, uh, but by all indications and what he told us, he's probably going to play outside linebacker for the Commodores. So, um, so here's a look at his offers. Like I said, is another guy like. Like Linus Zunk, you know, Vanderbilt saw him, saw his film early, really liked him, got him on the phone, um, was their first, was his first Power 5 offer. So you've got Arkansas State, Austin P, East Carolina, South Alabama as well. And, and, and talking to BJ, uh, you know, he came up to Vanderbilt earlier this month, took a little self-guided tour. Um, so that was kind of the, the sealed the deal for him in, in choosing Vanderbilt. He is going to kind of keep his options open a little bit uh, throughout the summer, uh, takes, maybe take some other visits. He specifically mentioned Arkansas State and South Alabama, obviously not powerhouse programs that maybe Vanderbilt should be worried about. But you always have to worry about other programs getting involved now that he's committed to Vanderbilt. And, you know, maybe expressing that openness to, you know, go to tr travel to other schools. But obviously, you know, he committed to Vanderbilt for a reason. Really likes the program, likes the academics, uh, likes what, you know, uh, the possibilities he can do, uh, the things he can do at Vanderbilt under that coaching staff. So um, I will flip the script over to BJ's huddle film. And Justin, you roll with it from there, man. Well, the one thing I really like is he comes from a winning program. You know, he, he led them to a state championship this past year. They played great competition week in and week out. And then when you get to watching him, uh, how versatile he is and the many different things that he does, you know, you can see why some schools would recruit him as a wide receiver type you know, possibly flex tied in. And then you also see, you know, what Vanderbilt likes with him as a linebacker. But if, as you can see, he can really move in space for somebody that weighs 210, 215 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I talked to him, uh, you know, and I mentioned the Zach Cunningham, kind of the, the comparison, and he was like, yeah, I got a picture of him uh, with him. I, I'll send that to you. And then you look at his picture – I mean, it was a year old or so, but, you know, just looking at his frame and how it is being next to Zach Cunningham, I mean, it was uh, pretty impressive. So um, I, I'm a little surprised that this guy doesn't have more offers than what he does just from the standpoint that, you know, people have seen Pinson Valley play right. and, uh, you know, just playing in that time. You know, it's not like he's an under-the-radar guy. Uh, but as you can see him, he uh, does a really good job of running. He's fast. He's explosive. You know, he's got some fast twitch about him, and he's able to uh, to uh, run down to the ball carrier. And uh, that's one thing I really like about him is just, you know, his speed. He's able to run. Right. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, obviously, he's showing off his versatility here. He's got, you know, wide receiver, tight end highlights. He's returning kicks, you know. Yeah, he's rushing the edge, so doing a lot of stuff here. And I and I agree with you, man. I I'm kind of surprised, you know, playing for a team like Pinson Valley. I mean, it's not like they're 1A football down in Alabama or right. anything, you know. And and they won a state title, so I'm surprised that uh, not other Power Five programs haven't gotten in on this guy. So. Uh, right, and it goes back to as well. You know, it's a different year just because of the COVID. Mm-hmm. And not being able to get these guys on campus and see them. You know, there's some guys out there that aren't getting the looks that they deserve or should because people don't know about them. I think that's, and, a, I think that's a credit, too, uh, just to Clark Lee staff, Barton Simmons. You know, they have a – you know, like I said, you know, we mentioned this before. They kind of have like an – almost like an NFL-type scouting department when it comes to recruiting. So they're out here right. – 
they're looking at film of these guys and, you know, uh, kind of seeing what they kind of bring. And, you know, it, you, you mentioned the year, you know, you can't get out and camp and anything like that. So they're scouring film and they notice this guy and they're like, hey, man, this guy looks really good. We need to offer him. And, you know, kudos to them for finding him, you know, when I think. Right. And I, something else, too, when you, you know, you're talking about the scouting aspect, I, I think they're doing their due diligence as well as far as, you know, finding the type of kid that fits what they want. Right. You know, because when I first talked to him, I asked him, I said, you know, what does Vanderbilt like about you? And, you know, his response was, hey, they like that I'm versatile. But he said, well, also they talked to my high school coach and he had uh, a rave review about me. So right. they really like that, that my high school coach, and you know, just saying that they're taking the time to do that, to call the uh, – high school coaching staff to, you know, to dig a little deeper to find out, you know, kind of about the character and those type things. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of programs nowadays that they never talk to the high school staff at all, and they're just throwing out offer after offer after offer. You know, that's yeah. uh, definitely yeah. not the case here with uh, Clark Lee and Barton Simmons and uh, that crew there. Yeah, and here's another thing I'll point out. Obviously, uh, you know, recruited by look, we can we put position coaches here, but I mean, really, another thing, you know, and and I mentioned this in Chris's podcast too, with with these three commits, you know, it's it's a team effort, man. I mean, they're not talking; these guys are just not talking to the position coach. They're talking to like every coach on the staff. So everybody's heavily involved in the recruiting process on Vanderbilt staff. I think that's a big thing that's really sticking out early on. It's just how much of a group effort it is. Uh, you know, in, in initial communication, and because uh, I think I think BJ said he, you know, he talked to the linebacker coach, coach mentor initially, and then, you know, obviously he he said he talked <laughs> yesterday. He went through like a long list of coaches he talked to on the staff regularly. So, uh, yeah, just a big group effort from them. I think that's the big thing that's sticking out early on, just in building relationships. It's not just with one or two people; it's like the whole staff. So I think that's really sticking out. It's gonna going to stick out to a lot of kids early on in, in Clark Lee's uh, tenure here. Right. All right, we're going to move on. The guy that we, well, uh, I guess the, the big fish yesterday in terms of rankings and obviously in-state too, uh, Langston Patterson uh, <laughs> at a CPA, uh, helped lead that team to a state championship this past year. Uh, Listed as an inside linebacker, um, you know he's kind of versatile. He can play inside, outside. I, I think he'll play inside most of the most of the time. He's at Vanderbilt, right. but um, five point seven high three star. Um, obviously, a guy that Clark Lee's had a long time relationship with, even during his time at Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame offered him uh, back in June of last year, so that's kind of when that relationship started. Uh, Patterson also uh, visited Notre Dame uh, back in November whenever they had that double overtime win against Clemson. Obviously, you know, Langston and his family was there to kind of watch his older brother Kane on the Clemson. On the, he was a linebacker at Clemson, but he also got a chance to kind of see Clark Lee and, and how he kind of operates a defense, how they utilize linebackers in Notre Dame's defense. So it kind of gave him a little bit of a, a nice uh, close-up glimpse of uh, how Clark Lee operates in terms of his coaching staff and everything. So, um, so big get for them. I mean, you know, you consider that relationship was really strong, and obviously, you know, Clark Lee was, um, you know, high school classmates and teammates with his head coach, Langston Patterson's head coach, Ingle Martin, back at NBA. Um, but, yeah, and still – it's it's kind of a tough hill to climb when you take over a program that's that was winless last year, you know, and and, and to kind of convince right. guys like this to come to your program. Um, so a big get for Vanderbilt uh, in terms of that, just having that relationship really did help. And uh, but you know it's it's tough to get guys like that to uh, to come to Vanderbilt when you're coming off a winless season. Because rec in recruiting, you know, when you're winning, you know, uh, recruiting goes pretty well. But when you're coming off a winless season, it's a little bit harder to get guys like this. Right, and when you see, and when you're winless as well, a lot of times some of your out-of-state kids and some of that that are away from the program that are further away, they don't really see it up close. Mm -hmm. right. You know, Langston Patterson being there from Nashville, I mean, he has seen this program up close for a while. So, I mean, I think it changes a little bit. You know, it makes it even more difficult when you're losing a lot to win and get those 
uh, in-state kids that other programs want. And it's just, you know, that's a testament to uh, Clark Lee and his staff, again, for getting someone that's such a, you know, kind of a high-profile linebacker here that has multiple Southeastern Conference offers that he can go to different places, but he chooses to stay home and go to Vanderbilt. Correct. And, you know, like I said, he chose Vanderbilt. You know, his other finalists were, uh, I think he mentioned, were Notre Dame, Tennessee, and Stanford. And, I mean, that's, an, you know, the Stanford thing kind of sticks out more than the others. I mean, obviously Notre Dame is still going to recruit him, even though Clark Lee is here at Vanderbilt. They still like him. But he had a Stanford offer. And, you know, we're, I mentioned this on Chris's podcast too, man. I mean, we're used to Vanderbilt losing out the kids to Duke, you know, and he had a Duke offer yes. too. So, but, you know, Stanford was considered a finalist. I'm not sure how much they were pursuing him, but, you know, when you when you beat out Stanford and you got a Duke offer, I mean, that's that's a pretty big win for Vanderbilt because Duke's been, you know, kind of beating them in a lot of recruiting battles the past few years. But to beat out Stanford, that's pretty significant too. Absolutely. So we'll flip the script here. We'll look at Langston's highlights from this past year. I think he had 70, going off the top of my head here, 76 tackles. But he, the thing that sticks out to me about his highlights or his stats is 26 tackles for loss. And I think he had six sacks. And he also, you're going to see some running back highlights on here. He's also, yes. he rushes for, he rushed for over 700 yards and 13 touchdowns. I talked to Ingle Martin earlier. Uh, did a coach analysis piece at bandysports.com. You all can check that out. But, you know, he said, uh, I think he led the team in rushing in the state championship game. So, you know, he just kind of a compliment to how much of a hard worker he is. So here's Langston. Just, Justin, tell us what you like about Langston Patterson, his film, what kind of sticks out to you about him. Well, if you're talking about him playing tailback, you know, I, I'm all about having a six foot two, 220 pound uh, tailback running downhill in power. You know, little that Ma- always helps the offensive line out a little bit. But, <laughs> little, uh, uh, little, I, Ma- little Mike Allstott there. That's right. Well, the first time I ever really noticed him, like in a game, that was the first time was really was him playing running back. That's when I first noticed. But uh, when you see him, I mean, he's all over the field. Uh, he, you know, he he's able to, you know, go sideline to sideline. You're talking about, you know, whether he's inside linebacker, outside linebacker. I think he's a true inside linebacker. Mm. I think that's what he can play. Um, I think he does a really good job of getting downhill and doing those things. Here he is running a little power. Look at that. There, you go. there we go. I'd have fire you up. Uh, but you know, somebody's being able to that's going to play linebacker. It's able to run like that uh you know that plays a huge part and you can just see too when he's playing in games and the ones that i've seen he's very instinctful you know he just seems to be in the right place at the right time uh he has all the physical attributes that you want and you know and just reading that coach analysis piece the what engel martin said about him you know just being how much of a leader he is and doing those things on and off the field that you need to do um, I think this is just an excellent first piece for Clark Lee's first, you know, true recruiting class at Vanderbilt. I think he checks uh, all the boxes of the things that he wants and, in his program at Vanderbilt. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, another thing, like we mentioned previously, you linebacker, maybe – that's a position where you're going to lose some guys after this year probably and you know that's a position that struggled last year so a lot of opportunity for him to come in and play right away yes and linebacker is a spot that you can typically play early you know we saw ethan Barr do that this Mm -hmm. past year uh i mean that's a that's a position that you can come in and play early so yeah no doubt i was flip the script here Let's go back and show our pretty faces. And we'll wrap this up. Um, there we are. Hey. <laughs> Just <laughs> smiling. Smiling, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. Talk about football. <laughs> That's right, dude. You were happy because you, you talked about power running game. That's why. Uh, that is true. <laughs> Anybody knows me and knows that I get to talk about power. Yes, that that excites me. <laughs> O-line, O-line coach talking right there. That's right. All right, any, uh, any closing thoughts here on Vanderbilt's big day on Monday? Well, it's just like I started out with. You know, I just I thought it was big for momentum 
mm-hmm. was kind of the key, you know, and like you talked about on the message board, everybody's asking, well, when's the first commit? When's the first commit? You know, recruiting is a relationship based and then, you know, they're getting in late and doing those things compared to what other schools are. So, you know, I, I get it. I get it. But, uh, and, you know, it's just good to have somebody uh, to to get your first commitments, but to have somebody like Langston Patterson, who's an in-state kid that has all of those offers to be the first commit, I think I, I, I think that's big, you know. Uh, you, and you followed Vanderbilt recruiting here for the past few years. You know, a lot of your top quality in-state kids, uh, a lot of them have avoided Vanderbilt here for at least the past couple of years. You know, that Cameron right. Johnson, Gavin Schoenwald were big. But as far as, you know, getting guys that other people wanted hasn't really been – good here recently so getting somebody like langston patterson maybe that's going to change some maybe that can you know improve the the in-state recruiting a little bit and uh get out on the you know on the right foot on that so yeah no doubt so obviously a big splash like you said everybody was waiting for that first commit you got three yesterday so uh good yeah. start so um, with that being said, well, that about wrap it up for, for us here at Vandy Sports. Always a reminder, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and post comments under our videos too. I'll let you know if you like them or not. Uh, anything you want to add in, in terms of your thoughts and opinions, that always helps us out as well. So we appreciate the uh, subscription numbers going up. Uh, so we're up to like 316, so that's pretty good. Uh, so keep that number going up. We appreciate it. And we'll continue to post some unique stuff here on our YouTube channel. And uh, we've been posting like Clark Lee uh, press conferences and after spring practice and things like that. So we'll always post stuff like that on here. But we'll always do kind of creative stuff like this whenever Vanderbilt gets a commitment and things like that. Me and Justin will be on here and, and talk about, all about that and everything. So. And if there's anything that somebody wants us to talk about, just suggest th- it to us. I think we, we uh, I think we might post pose that question on the message board and see what we can um, see who comes up with some suggestions and we'll work on that so right. good, good idea so we'll do all that over at vandysports.com so be sure you subscribe to uh, vandysports.com please with that being said sean williams justin angel we're out of here